In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the chemical defects that are associated with concrete members. So the, an outline of what I will be discussing in this video, the mechanisms of chemical defects, the defect forms that are associated with chemical defects, and then we'll look at some preventions uh, that we can uh, implement in order to avoid uh, chemical defects from happening in our concrete members. Remember the classification that mechanism that we ha had a look at in uh, previous videos. So we're continuing on and we're focusing on chemical uh, defects. So chemical defects, they are a result of three main uh, mechanisms. First mechanism is corrosion of the reinforcement. So we all know that concrete contains steel reinforcement embedded in it, and that's to increase uh, its tensile strength. Now, this reinforcement is prone to corrosion, and when it corrodes, it creates all sorts of issues for us in our concrete member. The second type of mechanism that's associated with chemical defects in concrete elements is the alkali aggregate reaction that takes place. And then finally, we have the sulfate attack. So in terms of the appearances of chemical defects, there's three main forms of these defects. You can either see the defect in the form of a crack appearing on your concrete member, uh, the spalling of a concrete member as well, or you can have discoloration. Let's start by looking at corrosion. Now corrosion takes place when moisture and chloride ions attack your reinforcement that's embedded inside your concrete members and you can see uh, an example of a concrete member that's corroding in the image in front of you. Up to 90% of damage that concrete members experience in buildings is a, as a result of this corrosion um, reaction. And corrosion in itself is actually a chemical reaction. Uh, you have to have chloride ions present in order to initiate that uh, corrosion. In addition, when you have concrete members that corrode, what ends up is a product that is not structurally viable. So it's a very important defect for us to not only understand, but also try to avoid. In terms of the chemistry of corrosion, I'll briefly talk about what takes place inside the concrete member. So from the image that you can see in front of you, you have your steel member that's embedded. Now for corrosion to take place, uh, it's an electrochemical reaction, and as such, you need a difference in the electrical potential of the metal. Now you can get differences in electrical potential within the same metal rod, or it can be a result of the interaction of the metal rod with, uh, with, the, with the concrete that's around it. Now with that, th that difference in electrical potential, what, what it creates is it creates a region that would be classified as your anode, and then another region that would be classified as a cathode. The anode is where your oxidation reaction takes place, so iron um, is, is, is uh, iron ions would be released into the concrete at the anode, and these electrons then that are released, they, they travel to the cathode, um, and then rust is the byproduct of this electrochemical reaction. Now the rust, the product that's produced, i.e. rust, the problem with it is that it has a larger volume in comparison to concrete itself. And as such, it pushes out the concrete and that's where you get spalling. So corrosion, as I said, it's an electrochemical reaction. The rust in itself is larger in volume. And because of that large volume, it pushes the concrete out and that's when you get spalling. Concrete bits start to flake off and that exposes the reinforcement to extra corrosion and the process continues on unless you, of course, find a remedy for it. Now, what, what are some of um, the ways of uh, avoiding that from happening? Uh, you can try to utilize a mix that doesn't allow chloride ions to seep in. Uh, another alternative is to ensure that there is sufficient cover. So make sure that your the distance between the surface of your steel 
reinforcement that's embedded in the concrete members and the surface of the concrete is large as is specified in a standard um, and this makes sure that it takes longer for these chloride ions to seep through and hence uh, initiate the process of corrosion. Another type of chemical defect that's common in concrete members is the alkali aggregate reaction. Now the alkali aggregate reaction is a result of aggregates reacting with the alkaline concrete. You can have alkaline sources that come outside of the concrete such as de-icing uh, salts that are applied in cold regions to melt the ice or seawater for instance if you've got concrete members that are close to uh, marine environments. Now we can tell that it's an alkali aggregate reaction that had taken place from the cracks that appear on the concrete, su on the concrete surface so you can see uh, the cracks in the image in front of you. They're longitudinal cracks and they're parallel to the least reinforced side of the concrete. Typically, in a concrete mix, we need to make sure that the aggregates are inert. As such, they shouldn't be reacting. So an alkali aggregate reaction. If there's silica that's present in your aggregates, then the reaction becomes an alkali silica reaction. Otherwise, if the, your aggregates contain carbonate rocks, then it becomes, n it becomes known as an alkali carbonate uh, reaction. The resulting product from an alkali silica reaction is an expansive gel, and that gel keeps increasing in volume as it absorbs the moisture in your concrete mix. And as it increases in volume, it starts pushing the concrete and hence concrete cracks. Now to prevent that from happening, what you need to do is you need to use supplementary cementitious materials and these inhibit the formation of this expansive gel. The final chemical defect is that that is associated with sulfate attacks on the concrete member. So a sulfate attack leads to an internal expansion of the concrete. The two main reactions that take place when, it, when, when we're talking about sulfate attack, it's sulfates that react with the lime and they lead to gypsum and then the sulfates would react with the hydrated calcium uh, aluminate and that would lead to etringite forming. This reaction, the product that, that, is, that results from the reaction, leads to an increase in volume so that expansion in the concrete results in the spalling that you can see in the image in front of you. To prevent that from happening, what we do is we would use cement that has low C3A content, uh, cement that has low permeability, and also utilize SCMs to make sure that these react with the lime instead of the lime uh, reacting with uh, the sulfates. Now these are two very good references for you to have a look at. I do hope that this video clarifies some of these uh, chemical defects that are associated with concrete.